do any of the panelists have loyalty programs and if they are internal or if they're party? I know that's kind of like a look for it's we're getting totally of like five star and belly and all these new ones that are coming up. And if you are internal, are you considering any kind of third party? We don't do any I, I have to tell you, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm so anti-opposed to buy the 10th, get the 11th one free, you know, you know, kind of deal. Like, it makes me feel like, so the first 10 I ever charged you, so I can make my money on the 11th. But on the flip side, um, this idea that we're, we're, you know, we're all here saying that we want to build relationships with our guests and to, uh, I mean, we're heavily researching, you know, there's also like level up that has a payment, you know, uh, uh, component because a lot of people don't want to be carrying a wallet to be able to have that. I, I'm telling you in the next six months and those that, that do have anything above, you know, two to three units or you're going to be there in the next six months, that you should heavily be looking into some form because they're going to come up with some frequency ones that are far more progressive. You know, right now you can go to Panera. Sorry, you know, if you guys think that I look at things that are 1,700 units because I think they're awesome if they can get there, right? But we look and they do a progressive one where all of a sudden I get sent a muffin, you know what I mean? Because I've never come in for breakfast and it's just like, it feels random. It feels like really not, not personal, you know? But at the flip side, I think that they're going to get, um, they're, people are going to figure out at a higher level um, a way to connect with guests. Like, while this person's been, you know, always orders our steak sandwich, let's really bring them in for our, our, our new steak sandwich tasty, but with Chef Judy and the culinary team and actually have them in their circle and do a dinner around that where it's not like just come in and try our steak sandwich. No, on this night, you can be part of our culinary team kind of deal. I think there's going to be something big there, and I think the mobile payments attached to it is going to be absolutely huge. So my business partner is totally looking into it, and we'll probably be part of it in the next few months. <laughs> We're making the loyalty programs. We do it on our own. Uh, we've never been a part of somebody else's program. Uh, we, we, from day one, when we open our doors in our first store, you know, give us your name, your address, and we, we manage it. We actually don't manage the constant, constant contact ourselves. Uh, we use a really high-end, beautiful cheese out of Wisconsin that they are smart, that they don't discount the cheese, but instead they have a marketing arm that they help us with mar different marketing deals. And there's a number of companies out there, some of the like Roma Foods, I believe, you guys are using big food bears, have a marketing arm that will help you with certain things. They don't do any of our creative for us. We give them all the creative from our, our agency and in-house. Uh, they do manage some areas that they basically are a residual work. Take that for using the cheese, they'll do some legwork for us. Uh, so I have looked into a number of loyalty programs, and we're, we don't buy lists. So we've never bought email addresses, we've never bought mailing addresses, we've stayed away from them. The people that want us tend to find us. Other questions? Yep. Tell me about the sampling thing. You don't want to talk about the sampling. I thought that was nice, slash, interesting. And do people actually then purchase? Um, end of the day, uh, my family, uh, I'm going to make this a 30 second one, one, I swear to God, but everyone's drinking so we can tell a little bit of like my family used to. My family owned a uh, grocery store um, during the depression. They had it for almost 80 years. And one of the things they were famous for is everyone at their meat counter, they would give everyone a hot dog, which was actually kind of a pretty big deal. And it wasn't to sell more hot dogs. It was just a sign of like generosity of like, hey, welcome to our home, you know, and it was, it was part of this value proposition of feeling hospitable. Um, and so if you guys go to Amendo, we have a deli case, and we actually um, sample you on our deli case uh, uh, salads or grain salads, and we're not trying to upsell you those. Um, now, do they convert into sales? They happen to. But we're actually training our guys um, to absolutely not sell. It's to give people, um, like my family did in the 30s, um, you know, just graciously, like, welcome to our home, you know, try our food, maybe check out something you've never had before. But it's part of that, that point of contact and that experience in the brand, right? Someone who's in branding, marketing, and yeah. on social media with big companies, you should tell that story. No, we I don't. I guarantee you people will 
See, I told you we suck, you guys. <laughs> I'm writing this down. You guys, when I hit the mic, I'm actually going to email myself that. That's a good idea. Why don't we tell people that? I think that's a, it's a charming story with a lot of history. Thank you. We'll take one more question. And then if there are other questions, definitely make your way to the panelists afterwards. Just before the last question, we're going to move these chairs out of the way to create some more space for people to mingle and um, have some conversations. So definitely hang around after the event, find panelists, find another guest, um, and we'll have more room for you. Where was that last question? All right, we'll do two more, right here. Okay, you guys have gone into great detail about online advertising and online marketing. Do you do any offline marketing or offline advertisements? And if so, what kind of media? So we don't do, tend not to do any traditional print advertising. We'll do it very once in a while, like in our random market in Walnut Creek, where the media is still, it's very difficult. And sometimes you have to pay, pay to play. It pains me, but sometimes once in a while we'll do it. Um, or we'll support something, you know, sometimes it's relationship building, it's we'll support something. Uh, but that's about it. We don't do any other advertising or marketing. We primarily rely on PR, word of mouth, and Social media. I mean, social media. We don't pay to promote Facebook posts or tweets or sponsor anything. Um, we spend ninety percent of our effort not online. Um, we, uh, the person that handles online, is actually you know really basically manager of guerrilla marketing. Um, we absolutely go out into the businesses and um, and share with them our food, complimentary. Um, and invite them to come in with no strings attached. Um, we don't think our food's so good that people will just, if we build it, they will come. Uh, if we build it, they will come. If we hold their hand and drag them into our community, <laughs> right? That's what we believe. And we think once they do try it, then we can actually build a relationship with them. Um, we spend an enormous amount of time within our four walls, really looking at, um, you know, not just at how our team members are talking about the farms that we're using and the experience and the good things that we are doing. Um, we really try to make sure that we're not, you know, sustainable washing, I guess would be the thing. You know, we stay very careful that we're not because at the end of the day, we have some good stories and we want to share them and we're very proud of them. We'll probably spend more time on, on that um, than, than we probably do elsewhere. We don't buy any traditional media, no radio, no print. If you see a print ad, it's because you know, they wrote a really nice article and they're a small paper. <laughs> like, why wouldn't you, like, you know, do it? But even then, we would never sponsor something. We'd probably promote, like, about a farm or uh, a festival we had coming up or something like that. It would never be to try to sell someone something. That's not the relationship that we want to have with our guests. So, uh, so. Thank you. Uh, billboards, print, radio, <laughs> uh, and then Billboards are awesome, by the way, awesome. We, we believe in mixed media and uh, using all different, all different forms of media for selling our product. Uh, and not just our product, our brand. As far as the product itself, uh, big into sampling. Uh, last week alone, we had, we were probably at seven events from charity auctions, uh, wine and food festivals in Beverly Hills two days a week. Uh, PS Arts, Big Thing and Parker Hanger, Santa Monica store. Uh, we, we're, we're anywhere we can get that piece of pizza in someone's mouth. Because if they can taste it, they'll like it, and they'll come back again. And it's also a sign, as Mario was talking about, of our generosity that we're supporting charity organizations which is honestly why my wife and I did this. We both came out of the entertainment business, uh, working on television shows and dealing with all kinds of different egos and doing things we didn't necessarily always want to do to make a living. Uh, nothing bad, but it was just subject matter you just kind of take. And we have taken that into giving back to our communities. And fortunately, our product as pizza is a community food. It's a family food, and we can give back by doing events, by selling pizzas at cost to the local high schools, so they can then turn around and make a profit for the student activity board. And that goes so far. And the good thing about our pizza is that it does travel or delivery business primarily, so we know our pizza being out there for 45 minutes, an hour, or hour 15 minutes at a sampling event, still holds the quality that people will get in their house. Okay, so sampling events are very important for us. Uh, that's our number one advertising uh, to get 
to get out there and to get people to try our food. All right, last question. Hi, I'm Natalie from Squarespace, and I was wondering how focused are you on optimizing your website content for to be found by search engines? And as such, what kind of tools or services are you using to improve SEO? We are very involved with that. We're always looking, making sure that we're popping up first or you know, that we're in the right space. Uh, even to the point where, in a lot of this, as I said, as a family business, my wife really handles that. We decided this year we actually we have a 16 year old intern that we brought into our space uh, who comes in twice a week, and that's all he does. Yeah, it, any of you guys that, that just have you got your friend, you know, to do your website for you. You need to go back and have uh, an SEO uh, uh, analyst consultant look at your site. Um, I, I literally would uh, go to my partner. I couldn't believe, like, if you put in, like, gourmet sandwiches, and we were, like, ninth over, like, I think, like, you know, someone that I didn't necessarily respect, maybe four, or, like, above us. I was losing my mind. In fact, we, it, was, it was four years into it, we actually had our website finally looked at. And they, it was like, it was almost like the doctor, like, mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Do you do that on an ongoing basis? So or? on an ongoing basis now, we're, we're constantly, it's monthly, we're having them uh, look at that. And um, uh, we actually have a in-house graphic designer uh, that's doing our in-store, you know, uh, branding. And he's in communications with our SEOs um, when he's posting, making sure that he's coding in the proper way. Uh, for it to come up, so it, it's a big deal, and it's one of our, you know, like I just said, we don't spend money on all these other things. We spend money on search engine optimization. This is another one of those bandwidth questions. Uh, we've done a little bit of SEO, not a whole lot. I think we just started playing with it this year. Um, it's just one of those things. Where do we have time to spend? And that's kind of fallen off a little bit. Um, we do spend a lot of time optimizing our website content. We have a blog, so having a blog and updating content, that also helps um, to drive content from different places. If somebody's doing a search and your blog pops up, you have to look at our website. Well, on that note, thank you all again so much for coming. We really are excited that all of you are here. Don't leave. Grab a drink, grab some food, or